This den offers every conceivable avenue of fun you can imagine. Augusta will have to wait. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. This week we are all about stylish living and we are coming to you from this lovely duplex on the Upper West Side. This home features expansive views of Central Park from virtually every area of the home. And if you're feeling the need to get even closer, the park is just a few steps away. Here on the main floor, you've got your stylish entertaining areas, all open with a graceful flow between them for easy hosting. It includes this large living room, a dining room, and a gallery-like foyer. Upstairs, there's a media room and three huge bedrooms, including this bright and airy primary suite with even better views of the park. Not a bad way to start the day, am I right? Well, let's start the show off at this surprising and stylish duplex on the Upper East Side. This is a home that incorporates all of the Tony touches you'd expect with its Park Avenue address, yet still feels decidedly downtown with its loft-like layout, proportions, and show-stopping architecture. Take a look. Hi, I'm Noble Black with Douglas Solomon, and welcome to 730 Park Avenue here on the Upper East Side. We're in apartment 1011C, which is an absolute showcase for the best of old and new design. This home is over 8,000 square feet, features seven bedrooms, eight full baths, three powder rooms, and three fireplaces. And all throughout, it's filled with exquisite architectural details you won't find anywhere else. Let's take a look. You enter the home through this beautiful steel and glass private vestibule with your own elevator access and you're immediately wowed by this amazing great room. You just don't find rooms like this on the Upper East Side. There's a clear downtown vibe mixed with Park Avenue elegance. For example, these columns, the cantilevered limestone staircase, the curved walnut accent wall, all look like they could be out of a Tribeca loft, while the wood-burning fireplace and beam ceilings and windows harken back to classic New York style. This room is the true heart of the home where you're gonna do most of your entertaining. There's two large seating areas flanking the fireplace and plenty of wall space for the most avid of art collectors. The owner here has impeccable taste, as you can see, and wanted there to be a coherent design story that ran throughout the home so that it's not just magazine worthy, but comfortable for everyday living. And part of that comfort is the sense of openness. On the first floor, each area flows seamlessly into the next. What that means is when things in here get too lively, you're mere steps away from coziness. Just behind that curved wall I mentioned and past the wet bar is a modern take on the classic library, featuring a wood-burning fireplace, beautiful Ceruzzo paneling, and amazing views of the Midtown skyline. The intimacy of this room is the perfect contrast with the great room right over there, and these pocket doors feature privacy glass at the snap of a finger. It's an ideal spot for snuggling up with a book, writing one, or just kicking back with the latest episode of Open House. Right off the great room is this formal dining area, which is huge. It features a stained oak accent wall, creative cove lighting, and mirrored TV wall. In addition, a bistro style banquet offers plenty of room. Like the rest of the home, this room is perfect for a large gathering or a more intimate affair. Follow me upstairs. Right off this airy landing are six bedrooms and the den or playroom of your dreams. Similar in scale to the great room down below, this den offers every conceivable avenue of fun you can imagine. Comfortable seating, gas fireplace, games, movies, ping pong, you can do everything in this room. Augusta will have to wait. This dreamy primary bedroom suite makes you feel like you're floating above the Upper East Side. And like most rooms in this apartment, there are two exposures providing great light all day long. Everything in this room feels soft and relaxing, 
from the cashmere carpets to the cove lighting in the Venetian plaster ceilings. Both primary bathrooms are windowed and fully clad in marble. This is a bedroom suite you'll never want to leave. And because it sits in its own wing of the apartment, it's super quiet and private. Well, that's the tour. I hope you enjoyed exploring this beautiful Park Avenue apartment that combines the best of downtown style with uptown elegance. Up next, we're at this Midtown East apartment. We'll be back in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're at this bright modern penthouse in Midtown East with architect Steven Wanta. It's dramatic, it's glamorous, and most importantly, cat approved. <laughs> See for yourself. I see myself as a translator of sorts, taking the cumbersome language of style and design and essentially doing a portrait of my clients in their style. Hi, I'm Stephen Wanta, and my firm is Wanta-Architect. This is a 2200 square foot penthouse in East Midtown, not including the lovely terraces, and I'm gonna show you what we did here. So here we are in the foyer, and we are making a place with the console and the seat that we have cantilevered off this wall. But really, it's a lot about leading you into the living room. And that's done in two ways. One, with this runner that we made out of floor modular carpets. And the Katie Stone art piece, which was commissioned for this space, specifically to lead you along the wall as you look in. So here in the main living space, the real challenge was to figure out how to light it properly and also define the two main areas, the dining room and the living room. The way we handled placemaking here was the carpets, of course, and also the lighting, which we did this constellation in a custom setup with a canopy that we designed to go on the concrete ceiling. The clients already owned the table, and you can see it's solid walnut with a zinc river of sorts. And we use this to inspire this console piece that sits between the living and dining room. On the dining side, it's wrapped with textured leather, and then on this side, it is this walnut veneer that matches the tabletop. Here in the living room, we designed this light fixture and it supports a mobile light by Christopher Dobby. One of my favorite elements of the space are these drapery pieces we designed. They soften the corners of the room and also work to control acoustics within this large space. Another feature of this apartment are the two amazing terraces. This one facing east. So here on the East Terrace, we have this really relaxing view, which contrasts to the slightly smaller West Terrace, which looks out toward Midtown. Among my clients are two cats, and for the primary bedroom door, I did put in a special feature for my friend Milo here. So here we are in the primary bedroom, and the bed design itself features this lovely sculpted wool and then these two reading lights that are wrapped in leather on either side. Taking advantage of some of the prized wall space, given how much glass there is, is this Mark Wigmore lit piece that was commissioned for the space. The clients were in Bali and they texted me a photo of a very beat up pair of doors that they loved. And you can see here we had them restored and refinished. And behind them is a simple box which has their bedding and pillows and so on. Here in the primary bathroom, we had this idea of printing an image on the back of full sheets of glass. In this case, from a photo from the 1930s, Given that this shower is internal, it is like you have a window view of the city. So the client had always wanted to have one of these Broadway type mirrors, but we designed this vanity specifically for this location. In a bathroom with such hard surfaces, these full height drapes do a lot to soften the space both visually and acoustically. 
I'm really glad I got a chance to show you this apartment. I think it's a great example about how I can work in different styles, even when the clients have different styles. Coming up just after the break, a Los Angeles home worthy of a fairy tale. See what I mean in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we're at this delightful home in West Los Angeles, dubbed the Storybook Cottage for reasons that become clear the more you explore. Let's take a look inside, shall we? What's up everyone? I'm Chris Pickett and I'm at Douglas Elliman in Beverly Hills. I'm standing in front of Quadruple Eight Appian Way, a vintage storybook cottage designed in the 1930s by Disney animators. Let's get to it and go inside. So once you get into the great room here, you're gonna see gobsmacking views. You feel literally like you're at the top of the world. Ernst van de Bovenkamp was a prominent set designer and art director from Europe. And if you look up, you will see these massive posts and beams and ironwork that Ernst brought in from his native Scandinavia. So Boven Camp and his artisans built out this two-story reading tower. When you look at this two-story tower from the exterior, it literally looks like a steeple. It's unlike anything you're gonna see in the Hollywood Hills. And speaking of unusual, Let's go check out the dining room. So the dining room is part of this massive great room. And the dining room is nicely flanked by not only the views, but this beautiful piece of art that is on the east wall. There's actually secret compartments, cabinets, so it's meant to be not only functional, but something beautiful to look at. Next up on this tour, let's go check out the kitchen. You can see that all the storybook cabinetry has been left intact, and yet the current owner put in the new stone countertops. You've got the Miele appliances, so you have all the features that you would want in a 21st century kitchen, and yet you still have the vintage architecture left intact. Another detail that I really like in this house is this stained glass brought in from Van de Bovenkamp's native Scandinavia back in the 1970s. We also have a wonderful eat-in kitchen here, very much a cottage feel, which works perfectly considering we're in the Laurel Canyon area. We also have a vintage chandelier, which is set nicely over the round table. Next, we're gonna go up and we're gonna see the primary bedroom and bathroom. So once we get to the top of the stairs, we are now entering the primary bedroom suite. If you look at the roof line, you see the vintage storybook Hansel and Gretel, which is cottage. You really do think that maybe even out of this kind of hidden door that the witch is gonna come out. And if you were a witch flying around, from the outside, you would actually see the house flanked by towers with these big, almost floor to ceiling windows. In fact, you might even see Hansel and Gretel trying to escape from the witch's clutches. And to complete this whole primary bedroom experience, we have this wonderful primary bath. We've got a double vanity right here, and we have some beautiful tile work with vibrant blue colors. This truly is, especially due to the view, a once in a lifetime experience. And last but not least, we're gonna end our tour here on the main home's private patio where they take al fresco dining to a whole nother level. Look at this view. And that's it for the tour. Thank you so much for going on it with me and I hope to see you again. Coming up, this loft in NoHo. You're not gonna wanna miss it. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. How often have you watched Open House and imagined yourself living in one of those spectacular homes? I mean, I know that I do it all the time. Well, that's how stager and designer Jason Saft thinks about all of his projects. See how he re-envisioned this over 1,700 square foot downtown dream. Take a look. 
My process for any space that I design is to create that perfect aspirational home and put it right in front of you so that you could see it and feel it. I'm Jason Saft. I'm the founder of Stage to Sell Home, one of New York City's leading staging and design firms. And I'm super excited to introduce you to one of my latest projects, One Great Jones Alley, apartment 3A. I'm gonna give you a tour, come on. My job as a home stager is to work with the existing elements in the home. And for me, I got very lucky with this apartment. The interiors were designed by Giancarlo Vallet, an Architectural Digest top 100 interior designer. I used his design as a way to create the most perfect and cohesive space. And that all begins here in the great room where my intent was to create a space where you could envision yourself hosting the ultimate party. I wanted to make the dining area feel distinct, and so I often go with oversized artwork that has a sense of movement to it. And then I paired it with these very sculptural dining chairs that feel like an art piece. And then to create a sense of intimacy and warmth, I use this low-hanging pendant. So when I selected the furnishings for the living room, I made sure that everything had a low profile so that nothing would obstruct the gorgeous views of the cast iron buildings across the street. Because we're in NoHo, one of the most dynamic neighborhoods in all of New York City. And the building is located just off the iconic Great Jones Street in Great Jones Alley, a place you may have passed by but didn't know even existed. And when selecting additional pieces for this room, I was very much inspired by the existing color palette in the apartment. The chartreuse chair is inspired by the rug in the bedroom, and the burnt orange sofa is inspired by the den. And then the coffee table and these vintage Italian leather chairs were inspired by the oak and linen closets in the primary bedroom. Everything that I've selected for this apartment is intentional, even down to the selection of coffee table books. And anchoring the great room is this beautiful custom kitchen that all I needed to do was just bring in a few pops of color to highlight the built-in shelves. Because sometimes with staging, it's just about accentuating what you already have. It's hard to pick one space to be your favorite, but for me, it was the library. I love the rich, saturated colors, and I love the warmth of this room. It feels cozy and like a great place to watch a movie. The thing that I love most about the room, though, was getting to do the shelves. There's nothing I love more than bringing in pieces that I've collected my whole life to tell a story. I brought in a lot of burgundy and deep brown books and a lot of really interesting sculptural pieces to make the shelves come to life. I really wanted to make this den feel like a place where you could come in and write a few chapters of your novel. And now I have one more space to show you. I wanted the bedroom to have a sense of escapism, and that inspired all of the material selections. From the artwork, to the weaving in the chair, to the birds of paradise in the corner. I wanted the bed to feel like an urban nest. So from the high caning in the headboard, to the modern lines in the pillows, it really brings it all together. Because when staging a bedroom, you want it to feel warm and inviting, yet not too personal. My goal when staging any space is to make sure that the moment you walk through the door, you say, this is the one. And I hope I've achieved that here, and I look forward to seeing you at the next one. Coming up in just a few, we're heading to the country to tour the home and studio of a design legend. Welcome back, everybody. We are ending things off this week with a bucolic stroll in Garrison, New York, at the former home of mid-century industrial designer Russell Wright. Wright is credited with introducing modernism to the American public, the inspiration of which you can see at the property he called Manitoga. See for yourself. Welcome to Manitoga, the Russell Wright Design Center. I'm Allison Cross, the Executive Director, and I can't wait to show you around. In 1942, Russell and Mary Wright purchased 75 acres of what was an abandoned logging and quarry site. Over the next 34 years, he transformed it into a place of astounding beauty, including miles of hiking trails, his home, and studio. Russell Wright was a leading industrial designer in mid-century. He is often credited with introducing modernism to America. He built his home and studio, Dragon Rock, from 1957 to 1961. 
The principles of modernism were softened by nature. The entry into the studio, the knob itself is a stone. Three of the walls are windows. And as we look out, it's a worm's eye view. So we're cradled by nature and the landscape beyond. So the principal room is divided into three areas. The work area, two sofas, which was a gathering area for socialization, and then his sleeping area, which is divided simply by an open shelving unit. And you can see a couple pieces of furniture designed by Russell Wright in the studio. We have the round Lazy Susan in the gathering area, and then the bedside table, and it is of blonde wood, which of course was a modernist approach to wood furniture. Here we're under the pergola that connects the studio to the main house. Beyond the quarry pool, you can see Dragon Rock. When Russell Wright's daughter Annie was a little girl, she thought that the rock looked like a dragon drinking water from the quarry. I hope you enjoyed the tour and a glimpse of Russell Wright's modernist home and that you'll visit us at Manitoga in Garrison, New York. video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from. Which will you pick? <laughs>